Hello everyone, I'm Mo Chen, a postdoc researcher from Technical University of Munich. I will be presenting the paper co-authored with Ian Gross Clarks titled An Analysis of the Current State of the Consumer Credit Reporting System in China. In 2014, the Chinese government issued a planning outline for the construction of a social credit system. According to the outline, the social credit system aims at allowing the trustworthy to benefit from everywhere while making it hard for the discredited to take a single step. Briefly speaking, the social credit system is the first national digitally implemented credit rating system. It evaluates both financial and non-financial behavior of individuals, companies, and social organizations. The social credit system has two branches, the government branch and the commercial branch. A big difference between the two branches is that the government-run social credit system is mandatory, while the commercial one is voluntary. So far, the government-run SCS has been much discussed in the press and is known in particular for the implementation of blacklists and red lists. Figures show how the lists may look like. The commercial branch of the SS refers to the consumer credit reporting system. Here are three examples of credit scores provided by JD Finance, Jima Credit, and Koala Credit. The majority of the Chinese are very familiar with these apps and use them a lot in their daily life. The media press has shed some light on the very famous one, Jima Score, but the privacy implications and risks associated with the consumer credit reporting service are hardly explored in a systematic way. In our paper, we explored two main questions. First, what is the current development status of the Chinese consumer credit reporting system? Second, how do consumer credit reporting companies collect and use personal information? In order to answer these two questions, we first mapped the Chinese CCRS and then analyzed the consumer-facing privacy policies of key entities in the CCRS. The CCRS came into existence in China in 1999. In 2015, a fundamental progress was made as eight commercial companies were granted permission to run consumer credit services. This was part of the pilot SCS programs. However, none of the eight companies received an individual license after the two-year trial period. In 2018, these eight companies and a state-level organization, National Internet Finance Association, established by Hong Credit. By Hong Credit received the first license for the consumer credit reporting service. There is some work on the beginning of the credit reporting system before the marketization process of the CCRS in 2015. In recent years, we observed little extant empirical work on this topic. There is especially a lack of literature studying the topic from the perspective of privacy. Although none of the eight pilot companies received a license, there is no evidence that any of them completely discontinued their previously developed services. Also, we found another four companies listed in the national platform of the social credit system for requesting consumer credit scores. In our research, we included all the 13 companies in our analysis and categorized them into three groups, traditional companies, internet and financial giants, and others. Here I will present Pengyuan Credit, Jima Credit, and Koala Credit in detail as an example to present the characteristics and differences between different types of companies. We focused on five perspectives in the comparisons of the companies, stakeholders, data resources, calculation dimensions, algorithms, 
and application areas of the credit scores. The stakeholders of the companies are usually big companies that have an advantage in obtaining consumer-related data. For instance, Pengyuan Credit, though it's now owned by seven legal persons and several natural persons, was set up by the local government and thus has strong governmental affiliations. Jima Credit is affiliated to Alibaba, which is one of the biggest e-commerce platforms in China. Koala Credit's parent company, Lakala Credit Management, is the market leader in intelligent point-of-sale systems. As the table shows, all the companies rely very much on their stakeholders to access data. Also, many of these companies and their parent companies participate in the construction of the social credit system, for instance, by providing technical support. For the calculation dimensions, we found that social network is taken into consideration by seven companies in credit rating and scoring. This means that an individual's credit score is not only based on his or her own background and activities, but also on others' behaviors and qualifications. Different types of companies all mention AI and big data technologies as the algorithms. The application of the consumer credit scores is expanded beyond the financial area to online and offline consumption and some public services. This means that the companies permit almost every area of daily life. Briefly speaking, despite the tightly regulated licensing model, it remains ambiguous who are qualified actors in the Chinese CCRS at current stage. Consumer credit reporting companies are actively involved in the infrastructure construction of the government-run social credit system. In other words, these companies directly participate in social control, which complicates the process of state surveillance in China. Not only traditional credit rating companies, but also internet giants and companies from other sectors are heading to the CCRS. These companies expand the understanding of their credit scores and broaden the scope of the application areas of credit scores. In the second phase, we collected and analyzed the privacy-related documents of the consumer credit reporting companies. According to the Internet Security Law, the rules, the purposes, the way, and the scope of data collection and usage should be published. For our study, however, we only obtained seven privacy policies and two terms of service documents. For the other four companies, Du Xiaoman Financial, Baihang Credit, Sinovi Credit, and Wanda Credit, we couldn't find any privacy-related documents. In other words, only about half of the consumer credit reporting companies have a privacy-related document. In our paper, we analyzed the nine privacy-related documents under the framework of policies. Policies is a machine learning trained tool for the analysis of privacy policies. It constructs eight taxonomy categories to highlight the most important issues about privacy. We repurposed the taxonomies constructed for policies and also developed eight taxonomy categories. In this presentation, I will go through three taxonomy categories, data collection, specific audiences and special purposes to present how Chinese consumer credit reporting companies collect and use personal data. For data collection, we made a distinction between personal sensitive information and other information. We identified eight types of personal sensitive information. Existing laws and regulations have specific requirements on the collection of personal sensitive information. According to the regulation on the administration of the credit reporting industry, for example, credit reporting companies are not allowed to collect information about religious beliefs, genetic data, 
fingerprints, blood type, disease, and medical records. Only three out of the nine companies state explicitly that they will not collect biometric information. Four companies explicitly state that they will or may collect such information. For instance, in the privacy policy from Tianxia Xinyu, which is developed by Pengyuan Credit, it is said that you authorize Tianxia Xinyu to collect your information including but not limited to biometric information and related additional information. This indicates that there is potentially illegal harvesting of personal data for some companies. Another example is about the collection of non-publicly disclosed information. Usually, data brokers collect information from public records only. However, we found that Chinese consumer credit reporting companies also collect non-publicly disclosed information from the government. This is explicitly stated in the privacy policy of Tianxia Xinyu. According to Tianxia Xinyu, non-publicly disclosed information refers to information that is formed in the process when the government and public service agencies provide individuals with administrative management and other types of public services. In this case, personal data flows from government departments to the private sector. We also identified three types of non-sensitive personal information. Four companies collect information of personal contacts, such as the address book. This echoes what I previously showed, that social network is one of the major dimensions of credit score calculation. In this way, information about individuals who are related to the user of certain consumer credit reporting apps is also collected. Such data dependence indicates that even those who do not use the credit service are also involved in the CCRS. This weakens the voluntary character of the CCRS. It is also common for companies to collect data from government entities and media. For instance, Jima Credit states that we need to collect true, accurate, and comprehensive information related to your credit, mainly including relevant judicial and administrative information that is related to credit. For example, the list of enforced persons issued publicly by the court according to law. Publicly disclosed information also includes records from blacklists and redlists as I showed at the beginning of the presentation. So this also indicates that CCRS and government-run SS are intertwined. Usually, companies collect, use, share, and disclose personal data for the purposes of providing products and services, marketing, and advertising. However, companies do it also for some other purposes such as national security, public health, and crime investigation. We identified six types of special purposes. Most of these special purposes are related to requirements from government authorities. Also, for all the special purposes, companies usually do not need to be authorized by the user according to the privacy policies. This means that the government could get access to the user information easily. Our annotation results show that the most commonly quoted special purpose is required by regulations, rules, and laws, or by government organizations. This indicates that compliance with legal and administrative requirements is of particular importance to the companies. We took into account two types of special audiences in our analysis, children and users from other regions and countries. China has recently paid more attention to the protection of children's personal information. The regulations on network protection of children's personal information took effect last October. It sets high-level requirements for data collection, storage, 
use, transfer and sharing, and disclosure of children's personal information. However, it seems that the consumer credit reporting companies do not take children's rights perspective on privacy seriously. First, only five out of the nine companies state children as a special audience and have special policy terms regarding them in the privacy-related documents. Second, according to the regulation, companies are required to get consent of the guardian of minors under 14 before data collection, but many companies fail to include this into their privacy policies. For instance, Tianzhan Xinyu suggests rather than requires the minors invite their parents or guardians to read the privacy policy and seek consent. Some of these companies provide credit service to users not only in mainland China, but also other parts of the world. However, none of them discusses privacy issues for other regions beyond mainland China in the Chinese version of the privacy policy. Our analysis of the privacy-related documents of the key entities in the CCRS has four key findings. First, we found that, compared to other types of companies, Internet giants have more comprehensive privacy practices. There are two possible reasons for the difference. First, many Internet giants from China run business globally. Their global operation experience could be helpful in developing a more comprehensive privacy policy. The second possible reason is that people pay more attention to data privacy in the context of online services than other fields due to the rapid development of big data and advanced information technology. Thus, Internet companies have to pay more attention to the privacy issue. Second, our annotation result shows that some companies' privacy policies are seemingly in violation of the regulations and laws. This implies that privacy protection practice in the Chinese CCRS is relatively weak. Third, as I presented, that companies collect information not only about a user him or herself, but also his or her contacts which can be family members, friends, and colleagues, etc. Also, the credit scores are already broadly used in many contexts, such as library service and even medical treatment. This makes the non-use of the credit scores increasingly difficult. In this case, although the CCRS is supposed to be a voluntary system, data interdependence weakens the voluntary character. Fourth, we also found evidence from the privacy-related documents showing that the government can get access to this company's data conveniently. This is in line with the global trend of systematic government access to private sector data. In conclusion, our analysis of the Chinese CCRS highlights that privacy protection is an urgent problem in the Chinese CCRS. In China, there are only a few laws and regulations addressing data privacy protection. Some were proposed and issued only in recent years. Nevertheless, some consumer credit reporting companies failed to provide certain required information about data collection and usage. Also, it is important to note that the Chinese CCRS is planned and implemented with the framework of the SCS. This is considered as a very special character of the Chinese CCRS. The high-level design fosters the integration of public and private sector actors in big data-enabled surveillance. Therefore, the corporate state nexus formulated in the SCS would further shift the power away from individuals and consolidate the predominant position of the government and companies. Thank you very much.